Let's welcome in sports reporter Nick Camino from our station up in Cleveland, WKYC. Nick, thanks for joining us. I got to ask, with all the stuff and the storylines and the quotes and the misquotes last week, why are Clevelanders so obsessed with Baker Mayfield? Like, what about that <laughs> attachment? You know, regardless of whether it's a good emotion or a bad emotion, what about that attachment has still pulled at Clevelanders? I have to tell you, Nick, this is a week one matchup made in heaven for us, right? Me and you. I mean, the, the storylines write themselves. It is going to be so much fun on Sunday at 1 o'clock. And, and, you know, to answer your question, there's just a lot of emotional attachment with him because let's think about this. In 2018, he's their number one overall pick in the NFL draft. He ends up taking them back to the NFL playoffs for the first time since 2002. There was a, a lot of fans that really felt like they were in the, you know, the Baker backing. And then there were some people that didn't like how things ended. So a lot of people are split. I think there's still a lot of people that, that like him and want to see and wish him well. Maybe not in week one, obviously, against their favorite team. But uh, and then there's a there's a group of people that are that are still pretty disappointed with how things ended. And um, clearly there was there was you know dysfunction and disappointment at the end there with, with him last season. But, yeah, he definitely uh, no no person in the world moves the needle like LeBron James in this town. But I would say Baker Mayfield's <laughs> a close second. <laughs> All right, going back to kind of the, the four years that he had there, obviously when they got Deshaun Watson, you know, on the field as a quarterback, the writing was on the wall for Baker. He wasn't going to stay there. But as the number one overall pick just four or five years ago, why didn't things work out for Baker and the Browns? Well, I think we have to go back to week two of last season. Um, actually, we can even go back to week one of last season where I thought the Browns played a heck of a football game against the Kansas City Chiefs. But in week two, they played the Houston Texans. He throws an interception on a play where he tries to make a tackle um, and, and his shoulder gets messed up, uh, the non-throwing shoulder, but he just was never the same, Nick. And so I think he tried to grind it out. He wanted to be tough. He wanted to play. Um, I, I don't know what the team felt in that same situation, whether they wanted him to be playing or whether they forced him to play or didn't want him to play, but he played um, and he clearly wasn't himself. So that's where things started to fall apart was week two when he tried to make that interception. Uh, excuse me, when he tried to make that tackle after throwing an interception. That's where things really started to go downhill. Then, you know, we, we had the whole situation with Odell Beckham Jr. Uh, and his dad coming out with that video. And, and then the thing just kind of started to snowball. I know, you know, week 18 was kind of a meaningless game, but he decides not to play. He calls it a business decision. And, you know, I just think the end of it, um, you know, the, the end of, of, of a Baker Mayfield era that I, I think a lot of people mostly celebrated for most of it, um, it, it did not end well, Nick. Yeah, all right. One more Baker question, then we got to get to the game that's actually going to There is a football game, right? There's a game that will be played. <laughs> right. And we've known about this matchup, as you indicated, for quite some time since the schedule came out. So what have the Browns players been saying about going up against Baker? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of them were speaking yesterday in Berea where they have their, their camp and um, they were just saying, hey, listen, you know, we, we got to focus on the football game. We know how things ended here, but I think a lot of them are trying to make it uh, not about Baker Mayfield. Now, it was interesting, though. A couple of guys were saying, well, hey, listen, you know, he's he's only one guy. Uh, we've got 11 on defense. We feel we have the advantage. Um, I think there's some guys that maybe still have some it may maybe ill will over how things ended here with him. But I also think there's some guys that have, that have moved on and, and they're ready to just kind of, you know, hopefully get a, a win week one, because as you know, I mean, this is a football team that is desperate for victories without Watson for the first 11 games. Okay. So now to the quarterback that is going to play for the Browns this Sunday, Jacoby Brissett, how are fans feeling about Brissett as the starter? What can we kind of expect from the offense with him running the helm? I got to say, Nick, I think a lot of people are lukewarm on this. Uh, show us, don't tell us. We've seen him in the NFL for, for several years. He's going to be 30 years old in December. So this is a guy who's been around. He's won games you know, in the NFL. We know that. But um, I think that a lot of people in their back of their minds understand, okay, there's a reason he's a backup. In a short sample size, can he win you some football games? Can he you know, not hurt you? Probably, which I think originally when Deshaun Watson was suspended for six games, people were feeling like, okay, we can – we can survive this. I mean, this is a quarterback that's that's done this before. Um, in a short sample size, he could probably be fine. Uh, but now that you're going to see him over 11 games, I do think that even diehard Browns fans uh, have a little bit of concern as to 
okay, what's this guy going going to look like, especially in a situation if you have a third and long? It's funny, Nick. I know you follow college football. I feel like the Browns are going to have to be like – they're going to have to play like Army where they're going to have to (laughs) run the ball and hope that they don't have third and long because if they have third and long – I think that's going to cause some problems on the offensive side of the football for Cleveland. Yeah, and you say that, and the Panthers, one of their concerns going into the season is defending the run. But with Cleveland, what are they excited about in terms of what they have? What are they kind of worried about heading into week one? Well, I think they they like their talent um, on the offensive side of the football. I mean, you've got terrific running backs in Chubb and Hunt. You've got a nice receiver in Amari Cooper. They like both of their tight ends in Njoku and Bryant. So, And they like their offensive line. So offensively, they like what they have. I know defensively, they feel like they have one of the best defensive fronts in the NFL. So that's the tough part about all of this. This isn't the Browns of old. This is like win now Browns, which has really made the Deshaun Watson situation that much more difficult that you're going to be without this guy uh, for the first 11 games. Um, but so, yeah, I think everybody feels good. The team, the players, the fans about the, the skilled players that they have uh, and offensive and defensive lines. The issue is the quarterback position. Nick, I'm putting you on the spot. I saw a stat that said the Browns haven't won a week one game since 1994. Is that right? I mean, the Panthers weren't even born yet. <laughs> yeah, they haven't. Uh, I know that they're, since they've come back in 1999, they're 120 and 1 in openers. I believe the win came with Jeff Garcia as the quarterback back in 2004, uh, but 120 and 1 in, in season openers. So uh, there is uh, there are some trends on the Carolina side going into Sunday. Do you think that changes? Do you think the I mean, what do you think is going to play out on Sunday? It's a great question. I mean, that's that's the big question everybody wants to know. I, I I've played out like 12 different scenarios in my head, Nick. And the one that just keeps coming back to me is Baker Mayfield getting the last laugh over the team that kind of ran him out of town. I mean, I obviously he didn't want to be here at the end either, but uh, there's, there, there's a lot of scenarios I could see, but the one that continues to, to find its way to the front of my crazy brain, Nick is, uh, is Baker Mayfield and, and the Panthers doing their thing. And of course, if you're playing the Panthers week one, there's at least a guarantee that Christian McCaffrey is going to be out on the field. I felt like if this game was in week two, we might not see him because he's had so many injuries, but week one, he'll be out there. You guys are going to be ready to go. Matt rule probably is feeling a little bit of heat. So I think it'll be all, all hands on deck to try and get this win for the Panthers and, Unfortunately for Cleveland, I kind of like their chances. All right, yeah, Nick. I mean, whether Baker said it or didn't say it, he certainly agrees that he wants to mess up the Browns. Camino and Carboni, I think we should do this maybe before Super Bowl 56. Panthers, Browns, what do you say? Yes, I like that. (laughs) This time we'll do it with like a nice Italian meal in front of us. All right, Nick, how's that sound? Thanks, Paisan.